Hey out there folks, it's Dave here from Dave Station VR, and today we're talking about a new PSVR game that just came out called Summer Funland. Um, so I was going to do a live stream or like a let's play of this, but I've been kind of sick lately, so I'm just going to do a quick review so I can edit out any potential cases of coughing my lungs up and blowing your eardrums out. But anyways, uh, this is a game with a collection of 17 different attractions and minigames, and it's similar in some ways to Carnival Games or Pierhead Arcade, but it's got a few rides that are more like a theme park than either of those, um, while it does still have, like, Carnival-style games. So I'm pretty much just going to go through in the order that I played them, give you my thoughts on each game, and then I'll wrap it all up at the end. First one I tried out, of course, was Roller Coaster Fun. Uh, this is the only roller coaster in the park, but um, I, I thought it was pretty cool for the most part. There's some really cool environment design, and you go through some interesting areas. It's a pretty long roller coaster, but the main issue is that it just never really gets fast, and there are forced blinders that you can't turn off. So um, those things both really hamper the experience. There's times when you think, okay, this is when it's going to get intense, and it never really does. So it's a pleasant experience, but it's not going to thrill you too much. The next one I tried out was the shooting range, and uh, this one's pretty unexciting as far as these kind of things go. It's a western-themed shooting range, and uh, compared to what you've got in games like uh, Carnival Games, it doesn't really hold up. There's some weird funkiness in terms of uh, your firing speed. It doesn't really seem consistent. And it just doesn't feel right, honestly. And it's really just not that much fun to play. So I would take a pass on the shooting range. However, right after that, I tried Gotham, which is the Batman uh, Batmobile ripoff that they've gotten here. And uh, it's pretty exciting. It's more fun and uh, gives you a better sense of speed, I think, than the roller coaster. And there's some thrills as you go through. I mean, it's clearly 100% stolen from Batman. I don't even know how they got away with it. But it's a fun little ride. I would recommend it. Next up is Space Journey, and uh, this one starts out in a movie theater with a kind of cool effect where things are happening in 3D space, uh, almost like a, a kind of a 4D experience that you get at a theme park, and then you go inside the screen. But once you get there, it's really kind of unexciting. Um, you float around some planets, not a whole lot happens, it's very slow moving, and there's just not enough there in terms of the splendor of everything to really wow you. Um, if you've seen any other space stuff in VR, it's not really going to do that much for you. The next one I tried was Underwater World, which, uh, despite having a very bland name, is actually pretty cool. Um, it's got sort of an ocean descent vibe to it, and there's some moments of action, some stuff like, uh, you know, like the movie 2012, where everything's crashing down around you, and you just barely make it. And they throw in some, like, prehistoric creatures and mystical ruins and stuff. It's a fun time, and it's fairly long. Um, it's not interactive at all, but it's it's a pretty cool experience. I enjoyed that one. After that, I checked out a little bit of Tube Ball, which uh, is pretty much a mix of Spark and uh, the Danger Ball game from VR Worlds. Um, you've seen a game like this before. It's like Block Breaker, but you're in these increasingly weird little environments. And uh, while it's a fun concept and it looks really good, I thought that the... Uh, the reach that you have with your paddles and the way that the ball bounces doesn't really add up to satisfying gameplay for the most part. And um, there's no real repercussion for messing up. It seems like the game just keeps running until you go through the whole thing. So if you lose your ball or if you, you know, run out of time or anything like that, it doesn't really matter. My next stop was Carousel Island, which, uh, as it sounds like, is its own island where you get on a little merry-go-round. And this one's very odd. For some reason, they just give you a magical wand, and you, like, launch random spells at, uh, like, tornadoes to blow them up. I'm not really sure what the deal is or why it exists. Um, it looks fine. It's just not really that much fun. After that one, I dived into Hot Pot, which is basically Fruit Ninja. Um, you're preparing a soup, stuff flies at you, and you get various utensils to slice it up with. Um, if you like Fruit Ninja, you'll probably have a decent time with this. It doesn't do anything crazy, it doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it's a fun little knockoff of Fruit Ninja. Then I went down the manhole, and the manhole is weird. It's this untitled, strange game where you're just riding a unicorn through this colorful tube, and it's got almost like a Polybius vibe. You're pretty much just like jousting uh, various objects as you go through and you get points for it. But that one was pretty interesting. It was off the wall. 
Um, you have to go out of your way to, to get to it. You just like walk down this manhole and it's, it's kind of a weird little fun addition. Unfortunately, the next game I played was called Jung Ball Lava and I hate this game. This is the worst version of Ski Ball I've ever played in my life. You don't roll the balls, you throw them at the holes. And the throwing mechanics in this game, I'll return to this later, but they're just garbage. The physics are really weird. There is no reliability. When you let something go, you don't know where the hell it's going. So I just, ah, uh, hated this one. After that was Candy For You, which I also really, really, really did not like. Uh, basically, you've got these big, like, jawbreakers or gumballs, like, circling around you, and you've got a giant lollipop that you use, like, a tennis racket to knock them towards uh, certain targets. And once again, the physics, just like with throwing, are all over the place. You don't know where the hell the thing's gonna go. And it just was frustrating rather than fun. I like the background. It's an interesting environment. And you can like knock stuff into the, the background to break candy and it's it's kind of interesting, but it's it's just terrible. I hated it. To be honest, I was on a pretty bad run here in terms of picking games, because the next one, Catch a Squirrel, is also just bad. I don't like Catch a Squirrel. It's a whack-a-mole game except for you don't have a hammer, and you just slap at some squirrels. There's nothing satisfying about it. Followed that one up with Whack a Penguin, which is a more traditional whack a mole game. Except uh, this game wants you to get stars for reaching a certain high score, and it's literally impossible to get the high score on this game. I did incredibly well. I did very well, but I got like half of the high score. And people on Steam are complaining about this too, and the devs are just like, oh no, it's perfectly easy to get it. We did it. But nah, that's bullshit. You're never gonna get the star for this one. Then uh, briefly I should mention Creature Hunt, which isn't really a game so much as it's like a meta game. There's these hidden figures all throughout the park that you have to match up with these little uh, shadows. And if you get all of them, you get a star. And uh, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you get all 12 stars, you unlock something. There's this big gate in the game. But I'm never going to get that Wacka Penguin star, so fuck it, I'm never going to see that. So we're getting into the home stretch here, and I saved one of the best ones for last, which is the Lighthouse Climbing Challenge. Uh, now, if you've played carnival games, you know they have a really cool uh, climbing wall, and this is in the same vein. Um, it's kind of better and worse in some ways than the one in carnival games. I will say I like the graphical detail here a lot. I really like the way this one looks. Um, but in terms of the fun and the excitement of it, it's not as much as the one in Carnival games, because there aren't like uh, handholds that disappear if you hold too long, and falling just makes the screen go black. You don't have any experience of, oh shit, I fell, and that sort of like pit of your stomach feeling. But overall, this one was pretty fun. I really enjoyed that. Then I tried ballooning, which is uh, just basically riding around in a hot air balloon, except for they've added this unnecessary mini game where you try to throw balls through rings, and, as I've said previously, the throwing mechanics are just all over the place in this game. It is so hard to throw the balls in the rings that it just becomes a frustrating exercise. And it's like they made a nice balloon ride around the park annoying by adding in an unnecessary gameplay element where you have to try and throw the shit through the rings. It's just not fun. I don't know. And all of that brings us to the final game, the final attraction, Maze Manor which uh, has a really cool look to it. I like it. Uh, visually speaking, it's beautiful. But once you start figuring out what the deal is, it's a really frustrating puzzle that you have to figure out with the moves. Essentially, you have to point your move controller with the little dot at the end of it to maneuver it through this, this maze. And if you fuck up even a tiny bit, you have to start over again. So your hands have to be like rock solid, no shaking no little like you know movement of your hand it it requires you to be so perfectly precise and steady with your hands that it's like frustrating i just gave up on it almost immediately because when i realized what it was i was like this isn't fun i don't want to do this so i didn't see the, uh, that one all the way through just because as soon as i realized what the mechanic was i was like nah i'm done i'll see you later on that one Overall, for 20 bucks, I feel like this game is totally a grab bag. Uh, there's some pretty interesting and thrilling and well-done experiences here. Whether or not they completely rip off the Batman franchise without getting sued, I don't know how that happened. But anyways, 
Um, for 20 bucks, I think, especially if you want to show off VR to new people who've never tried it before, this could be a cool one. That said, in terms of the actual gameplay mechanics, if you're looking for a game to play, I do think Carnival Games and Pierhead Arcade have more reliable tracking, more reliable physics, uh, like, say, for instance, the ring toss in Carnival Games. I feel like when I toss that ring, it's doing what I would be doing in real life based on how I move my hands. When you throw something in this game, it just doesn't make any sense where it goes. Um, so there are a lot of things that could be improved. But I think maybe, uh, you know, if you want something to show off to new people or if you want to try out some thrill rides and kind of a theme park experience, this could be a good one to pick up. Just know that some of the games are stinkers. So you might want to wait for a sale. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm sorry if this review is kind of crappy because I'm sick, but I appreciate you watching. You guys are great, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thanks.